wrinkled. It is awful what that chemical does to them. But it also alters judgment. This guy really, really itched. Because he itched, he felt he was covered with bugs. So what do you do if you're covered with bugs? Put insecticide on them. Oh, well, if you're going to do it, do it right. Don't dilute it. Use it in the concentrated form. And he poured it all over himself. Now we find our squad people found this guy unconscious, un not breathing, and they're getting ready to do CPR on him. All right? Organophosphate is emits nerve gas. What does this nerve gas do? Well, it makes you salivate. It gives you diarrhea violently. You urinate. You sweat. If there's anything that you can give off with your body, you're giving it off with an organophosphate poison. All of a sudden, our, and you get nauseous. So our guys are there, our medics are there, and they start to say, you know, I don't feel so good. They radio, and this is now evolving, and we're picking up, hey, we got a hazmat event here. And we did. Now, the medics are smart. They radioed ahead to the hospital, and they said, set up for us out in the courtyard, we have a hazmat event. And the hospital, being the wizards that they are, ignored it. We went in, we contaminated the emergency department. The patient did. Now, we then, they looked at our people that they didn't keep overnight, that were sick, and they said, you need a shower. Put them in the elevator, take them up three or four floors, walk them through the neonatal unit into the nurse's shower room. Potatoes. Okay, here we go. Now, can the fire police have any exposure to any of this? Or are you guys standing back and going, hey, look at that boy, that guy's puking over there. <laughs> you know, no, you're right in the middle. All you need is a little bit of wind. So, you know, know where you are, know what you're doing, where you're standing. This is uh, a training drill where we're teaching foam application and we're, this is down, I was working this event as, as part of HAZMAT we were down outside of Newburgh, New York, and we're actually approaching a burning propane tanker. Well, it's a prop, but this is what it looks like when we go in to nail those things. Greatest fire police, first on the scene of an NVA tractor trailer leaking something. How do you deal with it? Ever have a tractor trailer and you say, look at the stuff coming out the back? Or look at the stuff that's dripping on the ground? That nah. never happened to fire police, right? Oh yeah. How do you deal with it? Uphill, upwind, rule of thumb. Put your thumb up there. If you can't black that scene out, you're too close. Do not ever try to do a snatch and go. If somebody is down, do not say, I'll hold my breath. <clears throat> I can run in, grab them, and get out. But not gonna happen. You can't hold your breath that long. You then become part of the problem. Unconscious people in a cloud of vapor. Man, you see a cloud of vapor, look around a little bit. If you see that the, the grass and the weeds around the roads turning brown, where it used to be green, where there are no birds flying around, where the pavement is steaming a little bit, especially asphalt, all of a sudden it looks like there's a little fog along the asphalt. Any of these things are clues. Do not be near that. Now, what are you standing in? This is the tractor trailer. I will confess to you, you know the person who owns these boots. Okay, you get the message? Those are my boots. $350 a boot. I've worn them for a while. I, got, I did get them resold after that and I think it was another 150, but I like the boots. Uh, the acids from the highway from when the truck spilled its cargo and we just it was just it looked like uh, junk cars the stuff got in poured over the ground I walked in it never knew that it happened 
You want to hear something? When you talk about fate and good fortune, you can see my boots. I want you to know that I did not walk across our living room rug when I got home with those boots on. You've got to know that I had enough brains to change my stuff. I didn't know what I had on them. The next fire call I went out, I said, and it was in January, I said, gosh, there is something really weird about my boots. It feels like my feet are wet. I, want, I had cold water running. I mean, I'm a wizard, right? Okay, this is an IQ test. Hey, it's cold. How the hell can my feet be wet? I got my boots on. Those suckers are leaking like a sieve just because I wasn't careful. And if it happened to my boots, what do you think the, the floor mat of everybody's car was when they went home? <coughs> what do you think the floor of the engines were? What do you think happened to the underside of any of the vehicles that you drove through? And we had fire police there, we had fire there, we had EMS there, and everybody's walking around through this stuff, and that's what you're going in, and if you don't think about it, you're in it. Trench cave-in, we just sort of mentioned at the beginning, <coughs> <laughs> Set up detours. Keep people away. <clears throat> Risks, the common one. And boy, we can really talk about this because I've mentioned this one to you. <coughs> Some of you may have heard it. Wires down. Boy, you really want to get bit in the butt. Wires down. You can't see them. My wife and I, this morning, we walk every day. We take a, a walk through the village. And we, we have this, this route that we walk. And my wife looked at me and said, Steve, about half a block up there. Why, there, there, some branches fell off from the storm last night. I said, yeah, I guess, guess they did. So we walked a little closer, hey babe. I said, look at that. I said, you know, there are some wires. It looks like phone and cable. And they're just going across the sidewalk. There's no cone out, there's nothing. And, and this is on Main Street in Owego. I mean, you know, we're not walking where there's nobody. And then we got a little closer and I, we are still, Steve's rule is always be at least one good telephone pole behind whatever's down. That's at a minimum. We're a pole back, and I said, look at the service on the house. And the meter is pulled off the house, and then the drop from the pole to the house is down on the ground. No cones. When I did look, the power company had come and separated it from the pole, so they were dead. But then the other feed lines, do you think there could ever be any current in the phone and the cable line? First of all, there is current in them anyway, but what happens if a power line <coughs> drops down on top of the other services? Could you charge that line? Absolutely. So what wires can touch other objects, you know, like the ribbon rail, and you know, so if you're at a site, a scene of an accident, you're about three blocks away from the accident, and you decide as the fire police that you're tired. I'd like to sit down. Has anybody here ever sat on the side of the road on the ribbon rail at the end of the accident? Ah, okay, me too. Well, you know if a power line a half mile up is dropped on that ribbon rail, do you think it's going to tingle your tootsie a little bit? <laughs> now, at night it's really bad because you can, I guarantee you, you can't see them. So you go out on a call, you get wires wrapped up in a tree, the tree comes down, it's in the road, the lights are out because the wires are down, <clears throat> the wires are 